Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and I am joined in this video for another discussion of Star Wars by the latest Serial at Midnight contributor. I'm joined by Tom, a.k.a. Creature, the author of The Creature Columns. Tom, thank you so much for joining me for this conversation about Star Wars. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. So... One of the things that came we, we posted a video uh, a few days ago was recording this, and it was a conversation about Star Wars. And you reached out to me and you said that you had some – you wanted to talk about your fandom. You had a lot of positive things that you wanted to say. So we're going to have another conversation about Star Wars. What I think I'm now going to be able to do is just spotlight different voices in fandom because – it is a divisive time for Star Wars, but we all have our own unique perspectives. You've been part of the fandom since the very, very beginning, and uh, we're going to talk about that. So can you just tell us, I don't know, when? Uh, what was your experience with Star Wars? What was your first introduction to a galaxy far, far away? Well, way back in 1977, I was just a little guy, and I saw the trailer on television, and there was a little bit of talk about it uh, with my friends. And so my parents decided they were going to take me. And honestly, I had, I'd never really seen a horror movie or anything scary. I was very protected from that uh, as a kid. So it's ironic that I grow up and I enjoy the things that I do. But the thing about it is, is I remember the trailer that had the Tuscan Raider where, you know, these really bad trailers in the seventies where the, he threw Luke down and he's like, rrr, 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 over the top. And I told my mom, I'm like, I don't know if I want to see that. That looks scary. And she's like, now listen, your, your buddy, John, he wanted to see it really bad, and so we were all the parents were going to take you guys to see this, and so I think you'll be okay. And I'm like, well, if John's going, I'm going. And so I, I sat down in the theater, and the lights went out, and a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away came up on the screen, and it just blew our minds. I mean, we lost our minds over this. That's all we did. We ate, slept, breathed it every day of our life, pretty much as a kid, all the way through. It was just one of those things that became the greatest thing that ever happened to us as kids. When we would go to each other's house, we would play with the action figures and we mm -hmm. would all be this and that. My school play, even uh, our Christmas play, even made a little paper rocket ship and they had like stormtroopers. And I got to be Darth Vader and because I was taller than everybody and everybody was running in terror when, you know, I'd walk down the hallway in my costume. And it kind of felt good as a third grader. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we had this Christmas play, so everything surrendered, centered, centered around Star Wars back then. And yeah. So in this, there's no memory that I have that's not positive with it. Okay. So that's probably one of the reasons I love it so much. Well, that's a really cool story, and it's great to, you know, it, it's true. At the time, now, I was very little. I, I was, um, I, the one that I identify the most with is Return of the Jedi, because that's the one that I was the most aware of, but... It was total saturation. Like we look at now, it's there is total saturation now with Marvel and Star Wars and all these things. But it was a different kind of saturation then. It was like everybody was just on board with this thing. There wasn't this divided fan. Now people say there was. Do you, let me ask you that then. Being there, do you remember a divided fandom? An Empire Strikes Back split between the fandom that people say happened? Well, there was there was a little controversy more than fan, more than split. I think I think people okay. were excited about it. There was a lot of talk about what was going to happen. I mean, there was this rumor that Obi Wan was actually the bad guy and that he had actually been the one that had killed, you know, uh, yeah. Luke. Uh, spoiler, uh, <laughs> Luke's father and all this. And and you know, we didn't know what was. I remember seeing the commercial, you know, and uh, when they showed scenes of Luke and and Vader together you know, for Return of the Jedi, and people uh -huh. think, okay, well, Luke's found out the truth, and he's turned into the dark side. No one knew what was going on. And supposedly, the rumor is, is it was planted falsehoods just to keep us off track. I don't uh -huh. remember a division so much. Everybody was just kind of excited about it. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I, I do see a, a lot of division. I don't know if that's a symptom of the culture or what it is, but I do, I mean, I, I want to acknowledge the fact that the original trilogy is, in my mind, and it, it's probably me looking back on it but in my mind it feels almost perfect to me you know it's just one of those perfect things perfect storm of fandom that happened it yeah. made it really exciting that's how i feel about the original trilogy as well it's airtight it's bulletproof for me it may be nostalgia it may be just because it's always been there for me and i grew up with it but i don't know there is a, a purity to those movies that i feel like they are so solid in what they try to do that i mean 
he invented like Luke George Lucas invented a special effects division, which invented special effects techniques to make these things possible. It had never been done before to the level that it was done with those movies. Now I know I think it seems to depend on how old people were because I know people that were teenagers when episode four you know when a new hope came out or just star wars and then by the time of the return of the jedi there's ewoks in it and they're like they're teddy they're, sh- they're cramming teddy bears down our throats this is so corporate i know people that but i think for the most part we all look back at that as sort of a golden age with the saturation and everybody being on board with it star wars infiltrated every area of pop culture i wonder sometimes what it would be like if twitter had existed in 1980 say uh things Oh, could you imagine? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, that would be that would be pretty interesting to think about because we're now instant communication. Like something like we're doing here today was unheard of. You couldn't, you know, we right. we saw phones that were attached to the wall. Uh, that's how it was, and so you had to get. It was more word of mouth than anything else, and the mm-hmm. excitement that it generated. I mean, everybody liked it. I, I didn't really meet anybody that was like, yeah, that was terrible. Um, nowadays you will meet people that they don't really like the original movies at all. But yeah. back then in the culture, I mean, even in the middle of nowhere in rural America and Tennessee, everybody was, was on board with it. We, we just enjoyed it and it was something to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that, um, growing up in the time that we did, we do connect with that original trilogy. I do notice there are some prequel era children, 90s kids. I would just say a lot of 90s kids really seem to connect with those movies. And I don't know that anybody sees those as airtight. Like, we look back on the classic trilogy, the the OT, with reverence. I don't know if the same reverence is applied to the prequel movies by the, the 90s generation. Um, but I do think that that is their Star Wars. Because whatever you grow up with, those action figures, hey, all the all the video games, the uh, the PlayStation games and the uh, the Nintendo 64, probably a pod racer. It was, it was a really exciting time. Do you have an opinion on the prequel era? Because you lived through that one as well. Yes, I do. I mean, I, I enjoy a lot of the prequel era. I think it's... Um... I think it's wrong to completely attack that. I mean, after I saw the first one, I was like, ah, I don't know. You know, it, se- it seemed a little strange. And and mostly, honestly, it was centered around the Jar Jar Banks thing yeah. uh, that kind of drove me a little bit crazy. And also, I felt like there was an awful lot of politics to it, and it didn't feel very Star Wars-like for a little bit. But, you know, it, it grows on you. And I started picking out the parts of it that I liked. I mean, you got, without the prequels, you would not have Young Obi Wan, you would not have Qui Gon Jinn, you would not have Darth Maul, you wouldn't have these just incredible, incredible characters that have, well, like the book I just recently, you know, wrote a review for on the site. You know, you wouldn't have that without that. I mean, everybody that talks to me knows my favorite fictional character of all time is Obi Wan. So anything that gives me more Obi Wan makes me happy. And I think that there are parts in those prequels that are just wonderful. Now, mm-hmm. there are parts that the dialogue's really clunky and yeah. it's kind of like eye-rollingly bad, but that's my daughter's Star Wars. That's how yeah. she really she really got into it. So she has that same fervor she said, yeah. for those. And she, she loves she loves the old and she loves the new too, but I, I can see that it does depend. It is generational, a lot of it. And it, I yeah. think that's a good thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a good yeah. thing if something can pull that off. That's a very fair point. My daughter is a, she's a teenager now and she loves Jar Jar. Jar Jar is one of her favorite Star Wars characters. And I'm like, what are, you know, why? What do you get out of this character? But it's just she grew up with it. He's funny, he's goofy, he's not taking himself seriously. And the fact that, you know, I think that George Lucas had more in mind with that character than maybe we got to see, but it is worth noting Jar Jar Binks is the character that cast the deciding vote to start the Clone Wars. I don't think that was an accident. I think that Lucas had a plan for that character. Um, Maybe one of the more tragic characters in Star Wars, but we really didn't get to explore it that much because the the backlash was just loud and hard. I guess, do you want to talk about the modern era of Star Wars? Because we are in a very divided time, and it seems like people are picking sides and attacking each other instead of focusing on their own love. It seems like they're trying to go after other people. Do Do you care to talk about that? Sure, I don't mind at all. I mean, honestly, let's. I mean, the elephant in the room is the Last Jedi is just really not that good of a movie. I mean, it, it isn't. It's got it's got its moments that I really like, but it, it, I kind of have to treat those the way I did some of the stuff in the prequels. Mm-hmm. I think that we'll be okay in a few years when we look back on that. 
I, mm-hmm. I think that I've always thought it's unfair for people to judge stuff until the whole story's been told. So let's just see yeah. what happened. Now, my biggest beef with Disney, my biggest sense of disappointment, and I guess the thing that I might not ever forgive them for is they did not put the three main characters on the screen at the same time when they had the opportunity. That is a lost opportunity that will never be able to be revisited. And that breaks yeah. my heart about it. That that really is my biggest beef with the whole thing. Now, mm-hmm. I know that, you know, Luke and his blue milk, you know, I, I think even Mark Hamill realized that was a kind of a bad scene. If you look at his face when he drinks that, he's kind of, mm, you know, he's doing that little number. Uh, I don't I don't even think he appreciated that scene that much. I don't know if it was supposed to be a nod to the blue milk from the Bantha milk back on in the original yeah. movie or what it was. I don't, I don't know what they were doing in some of those scenes, but. Also, there are some great scenes, what? good scenes in The Last Jedi, and I don't hate yeah. all of it, uh, and I, I don't really hate any of it. I just kind of, some of it makes me go, okay, what were you doing here? I, I don't think I'm being hyperbolic when I say this. I've never seen Star Wars fandom this divided before. I didn't see it this divided during the prequels. I didn't see it this divided, uh, you know, in 83 with Ewoks, and I know that, was a, that was a tipping point for people is Ewoks, but I didn't see it then. I'm seeing so much... <laughs> anger and division right now because of these movies and um on one hand i understand it because we have reservations about it ourselves but on the other hand it is so sad and so unfortunate that a movie has torn us apart like this what do you think about that i think it's you know i think you're right there and i like i guess can i say this I th- it seems to be fashionable to get upset nowadays uh, yeah. People get upset about lots of things and and i think you know and i understand that i i truly I'm not the biggest fan of of The Last Jedi. But again, I'm going to reserve any judgment on that until I see the ending. You know, and I know that people have talked about, they said, OK, well, how is Palpatine going to be back? That's going to that's undoing everything that the originals did. But there is some precedent for that, because if you read any of the comics back in the day, you know, with the Dark Force Rising and Dark Force Rising 2, you know, the Emperor existed as energy and he had his own clones. He was going to re-inhabit and come back and he actually did and Luke had to fight him. And, you know, maybe they're going somewhere with that kind of stuff that's now it's no longer, it's no longer, you know, canon, but maybe they're yeah. tapping into that. That'd be pretty cool. I, I could I could deal with that. Oftentimes, the, I was going to say the Dark Empire comics from the early 90s kind of dealt with the Emperor, too. If I remember correctly, it's been a long time since I've read those, but I'm pretty sure that he was present in Dark Empire as well. And I think that if we do look at these movies, they are not drawing from canon the, or the old EU canon, but they do kind of tip their hat towards them. So, for instance, you know, in the expanded universe for years and years, Han and Leia had two twins. Uh, one of them went to the dark side. Well, here in the movie, they have a kid. They don't have twins, but they have a kid, and he's gone to the dark side, apparently. We, we'll see. Bree has some interesting theories about where this is going. But it does seem to, if not follow previous work, it does seem to be influenced by it. So that's a fair point. There's certainly precedent for a return of the Emperor. Um, uh, I don't know that we, like... <laughs> They do. They have gone to the Death Star uh, uh, trope a little, little too many times. I think. Hopefully, we can see something a little bit. We're going back to the Death Star again this time because there's like ruins of the Death Star down on this, this moon. But uh, yeah, that's a fair point. We, there's certainly precedent for that. We've done it all before. I don't know that there's anything that can be done in Star Wars that we haven't seen at some point in a in a variation. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be interesting too. But you know, I see. Having watched it all from so long ago, you saw back in the 70s, you had a distinctive good, bad, you know, good side of the force, bad side of the force. Okay, then we had the midichlorians introduced in the prequels, that pretty controversial issue in and of itself. And the force took on a whole, whole different kind of perspective. It was almost a genetic thing rather than a spiritual. It moved from the spiritual almost to a genetic thing. And now what we're seeing, I think, with Ray, now this is just me, I could be dead wrong here, but I think Ray has kind of aspects of the dark side and the and the light side of the force. And I think what we're seeing is the emergence of the gray Jedi. Now the gray Jedi was a was a is a concept that's been in the role playing games for a long time. They're people that just practice the force, they use all mm-hmm. of it. And their individual actions determine whether they are good or evil. There's no mm-hmm. you do this and it's evil, you do that and it's good. Um, 
So I don't know if we're seeing that the way society's changed a little bit because things are a little bit more tent, gravitate toward relative, relativism nowadays. And I don't know if that's what's going on. We saw a distinct good and a distinct bad. Then we kind of see how it's biological and it moved from the from the spiritual to the more the biological. And now we're seeing the gray Jedi where it's good and evil is not clearly defined all the time. Uh, it, mm-hmm. I mean, it's interesting. If nothing else, it, it's interesting. Yeah. Have you heard any of George Lucas's ideas? Uh, the last, I don't know, it's probably been about a year or so ago. He did a conversation with James Cameron for something. It was some documentary and he was talking to James Cameron on camera. And he he started talking about what he was going to do originally with 7, 8, and 9. And it was it was out there, man. It was like... Uh, it was going to be – he's always been talking about the wills. You know, you go back to the original novelization. It's from the Journal of the Wills. That was always part of his his uh, genesis of the idea. But the wills were now like these microscopic entities, kind of like midichlorians, I think. And he was going to say – he was saying it was like these movies were going to – his versions of these movies were going to explore like the building blocks of, of uh, the wills and how they influenced events. And I was like, that sounds very – challenging but that also sounds really interesting and he was always i don't want to say ahead of his time he was always thinking outside of the box and that was a very outside the box story um and so i don't know as 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 hated as midichlorians are it was an interesting idea that nobody was expecting and i kind of i kind of applaud him for it i mean if he's nothing if not bold i mean he'll definitely take a risk He, he sure will and a lot, most of the time, I mean, I guess I would too if I were him, because it usually pans out for him. He usually manages yeah. to do something pretty provocative and pull it off. So I, I don't know how that would have went. I don't know how I would have felt about it. I guess I would have had to have seen it. Yeah, but uh, I know. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I, I mean, I'll tell you, I am really excited for the last movie because I'm interested to see the Skywalker saga close out, and I'm interested to yeah. see what happens next. I'm interested to see what they're going to do with the Mandalorian and all the rumored mm-hmm. shows that are going to pop up on there. It's too expensive a property not to like uh, spread a little love around for uh, make as much money off of it as they can. And I, I realize a lot of it's commercial, but I do think people like David Filoni and folks like that that have been involved in the really excellent Clone Wars cartoon yeah. and the, the Rebels cartoon, which are both really well written and kind of understand what Star Wars is. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that we're i really have confidence i'm trying really hard to have tremendous confidence i think the mandalorian is going to be great i'm going to be i'm more excited about that than i have been in a, a lot of things for a long time yeah uh, i am too. I, really like I think Rogue one too i'd like for them to capture that kind of stuff you know yes i think the future looks pretty bright once we get past these controversial movies i think that it's kind of a shame to me that these steps with seven eight and nine seem to coincide with disney finding a way like finding how to approach these properties having to take some chances and maybe realize that they've taken some missteps i think that putting solo so close to the last jedi really hurt solo uh, just there are some decisions that it's just kind of a shame. But moving forward, having learned from those mistakes or whatever we want to call them, those experiences, I think that it does look pretty optimistic because, you, like you say, Dave, there is no one more qualified to be making Star Wars than Dave Filoni because he worked side by side with George Lucas for years. I think like six years he worked with George Lucas, and George Lucas would tell him. This is how you make Star Wars. This this does this character does this. These are the arcs. This is how we construct the story. I'm teaching you how to make Star Wars. And I think that I don't want to I'm hopeful. It seems like Dave Filoni is being groomed for a leadership role in Star Wars. You know, he came from animation, but now they've brought him into The Mandalorian. He's directing, he's doing some production on The Mandalorian, and he's been talking in inter- interviews about how educational it's been for him because he comes from animation, but he's like, oh, we have to worry about daylight. We're losing daylight because when the sun goes down, we have to stop working, and that's new for him. So I think he's being groomed and he's being taught how to bring this bring this forward with him and i really really hope that he is the guy that they tap because he has the fan um vote of confidence he has the creative know-how i i I really don't think there's anybody more qualified to be doing this i'm even going to say more than like a kevin feige or somebody like that it's dave filoni is the man for star wars so hopefully in the future we get more projects with him at the at the helm because he is um he his name means so much to me. It is a stamp of quality whenever I see Dave Filoni on a Star Wars project or any other project as well. His animation before Star Wars is uh, – people love that stuff. So it's looking good. It, it is looking He is great. Yeah. 
I, I think so. I think we have a lot to be optimistic about. And, you know, my daughter, she's um, she's 18, so she's kind of been on this journey with me since I finally got her to watch the first. And she is the biggest Dave Filoni fan you could ever run into. She thinks he is the cat's pajamas. Uh, she she has been clamoring for a year or two about David needs to be in, in charge. He needs to be in charge. And I'm like, I agree with you 100 percent. Yeah, uh, she she thinks he could really pull it off. So she has lots of love and respect for all the stuff uh, because it's Star Wars. She says, hey, it's part of the story. And we just have to deal with the parts we don't like and enjoy the parts that we do like. And I think that's a good attitude to have. I agree with that. There's a phrase that says uh, it might be a southernism. I don't know, but it's uh, eat the meat or chew the meat and spit out the bones, which is basically saying take what you can get out of it and what you can't use, get rid of it. Just take what you take what works for you. And I think that that's probably a good credo, especially they're going to keep doing this, it, arguing about what's corporate and about what's uh, like we didn't need these movies. well this is this is the world we're living in disney is a multi-billion dollar company they have an investment this is what's going to happen so hopefully we can get good quality stuff and enjoy that's what i'm doing as we lead up to the rise of skywalker i'm just going to enjoy the ride this is going to be the last one for for several years several years new books new video games i'm just going to enjoy it so that's where i'm at it sounds like you're in the same place uh, yep only only thing I uh, think about is the positive aspects of it because, again, every memory I have associated with Star Wars is positive and it is good. Yeah. I've, I've been there for opening nights and all this stuff, and I've been able to enjoy that with my, my daughter so much. And that's been super special over the years. Now, granted, I'm a fanboy and uh, I love it, but the thing about it is, is it's just it's just had a real positive impact. You know, it's something that's good mm -hmm. to just enjoy. And I yeah. got to go to Star Wars Celebration this past year and meet a lot of people. And you could feel the unity of fandom there. We may have a lot of negativity that is flying back and forth, but sometimes on the on YouTube and different places. But there was a yeah. unity at this convention that was powerful. You could you could reach out and touch it. People were nice and and when the trailer dropped, it was a nut house. People went <laughs> berserk. <laughs> It was really, really great. It was a good feeling to be there. You saw people with tears in their eyes and people like patting each other on the shoulders. It was this sense of, it's like a giant family. It was, and that's what sports is. It's this giant community of people that love something so much that they're willing to be as patient as they need to be to get it. And yeah, it's a good, it's a good thing. Well, that seems like a great place to leave this conversation. Please tell us how people can get in touch with you, where they can. You have a YouTube channel. You have the Creature Columns. Tell us a little bit about where they can find you. Well, they can find me on YouTube. At, uh, it's Comic Book Creature. It's it's under Creature. Uh, and they can uh, they can see some of my stuff, my contributions to your website on SerialAtMidnight.com. Uh, yes. I also have uh, Instagram and uh and uh, a Twitter that I'm not really good at the Twitter thing. I usually just post to Instagram and then have it post to Twitter. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm okay, well, I'll link, stuff. absolutely. I'll link to all that in the video description of this of this video. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us about your fandom, about your positive outlook on the future of Star Wars. This has been a real pleasure. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you having me on, Heath. Thanks a lot for letting me be involved. Uh, you're welcome. And guys, thank you for watching this video. We appreciate your time as well. And of course, we want to continue the conversation in the comments below. So weigh in and uh, we will keep this going. Guys, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And until next time, we will catch you later.